Proudly, we hail. New York City, where the American stage begins. Here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your army to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, The Vital Minute. This is a story of Tokyo today, and how two resourceful and sometimes even intrepid sergeants of the United States Army, bent on a simple hunting trip, became involved in a thrilling tale of oriental intrigue. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, have you ever listened to an old soldier talk? You know, Army men can tell many a true story of courage, of distant lands, of fun and pranks in their training days. But notice that proud gleam in an old soldier's eye when he reminisces. Well, that comes from the knowledge that he served well, beside the finest men in the world. The old soldier can tell you what the Army can do for you, because he's the man who knows. The United States Army has always been proud of its men, and the men have always been proud to wear the Army uniform. Ever since that hot July day back in 1775 when the recruiting service was first organized, the United States Army has sought for those men who were, and I quote, held most in esteem, unquote, by their districts, to use George Washington's own words. Yes, siree, the Army wants you, needs you, can use your ability if you're young, intelligent, and can measure up to the high standards required of today's American soldier. For complete information on what the Army can offer you, visit your local United States Army recruiting station today. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, The Vital Minute. <laughs> I'm Steve Stevens, Master Sergeant, United States Army. I've been out here in Tokyo about a year now. Before that, Korea. But that's another story. Just let me tell you, there hasn't been a dull moment. When I got back here in Japan, they were still fighting over there in Korea, and those of us who were lucky enough to be here on the safe side of the water were working seven days a week to get the supplies and the ammunition and the other things that were needed over there going out in a steady stream. And let me tell you, we were very glad to do it. There's something pretty satisfying about doing a good job. Of course, there were times when we griped about the hours, but all of us knew the minute it was possible that we could look forward to a nice long stretch of accumulated leave. I guess about everyone in the outfit had a different idea of how he was going to spend his time. Nights, we used to sit around and talk about it. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> hey, you know, i never been anywhere until I got in the Army. When I get leave, I'm really going to see Japan. I've been reading. And I'm going to go down to Kyoto. Kyoto, that's and... the place that wasn't bombed during the war. Uh, uh, yeah, uh-huh. It was spared because it's really the cultural center of Japan. And the fact that we didn't bomb it, along with the Imperial Palace here in Tokyo, was a great point in our favor when we later had to occupy the country. Ah, who cares about that? Me, I'm going up to Hokkaido. Some of the best skiing in the world up there. Well, personally, I like culture and all that, but I'm going down to Ito. At the Kawano Hotel on there, they have two of the most beautiful golf courses in the world. Look here, I got this folder from Special Services today. Yeah, but you, you can play golf and ski just the same back in the States. You ought to take advantage of seeing this country while you're here. Each one to his own taste, kid. Hi, Bill. Oh, hi, Bill. Hi, Bill Johnson. Well, there's no sense in asking this guy where he's going when he gets leave. <laughs> I swear, he's going to polish the butt right off that shotgun of his if he doesn't get a chance to get out and use it. And start <laughs> quacking like a duck. You're too. not just kidding. <laughs> Boy, I can't wait. There's nothing like honey. You know, it's more, more than, than just a sport. It's a state of mind. 
<laughs> One thing about this group, there's enough different opinions. <laughs> Everybody to his own taste. Hey, you know Collins? His dad runs a dairy farm in Wisconsin. Well, he got special services to arrange for a trip through a Japanese dairy for his <laughs> leave. No kidding. <laughs> well, as you say, everyone likes something different. Hey, what are you going to do on your leave, Steve? Oh, I don't know. I haven't got any special plans. Well, why don't you come along with me? You know, that's an idea. I might just do that. I'd like to have you come along. With all that Japanese you've been studying at those I&E courses, it might come in handy. You know, I've gotten so I can get along pretty well, too. I took a train out to Asakusa Sunday. You never see any Americans out there, and no one speaks any English. And heck, I may not have been talking like a native, you know what I mean, but everyone understood me. No kidding. Hey, you studying it for some reason, Steve? No, no, I just got interested in it. Those I&E courses are pretty good. You can, you can study for a regular college degree, if you like, or just take one or two courses in something you're interested in, like I did. Huh. Well, I sure would like to have company if you want to go with me. Hey, we ought to go downtown tomorrow night. Huh? I know a little store that's got some beautiful hunting guns. And with you to interpret, maybe we could get a real deal. <laughs> okay, tomorrow night. <laughs> We got it, Steve. Huh? We got it. Ten days, starting Friday. Hey, get started packing, kid. We're on our way. That's terrific. Hey, let's see that map again. I want to make sure of the name of that town for when we go down to buy the train ticket. Oh, here. Here, here. Here it is. Oh. Sugiyoshi. That's the town. And the lake's only two miles? It looks further than that. Oh, I checked it all with special services. They got their reports from two guys who were just up there last week. Hey, see? Over there on the other side's the swamp. Uh-huh. And that's where the ducks will be hanging out. Yeah, we hope. Yeah, we'll find ourselves a nice campsite right by the lake, and oh, boy. <laughs> you know, I'm really looking forward to it. Peace and quiet out in the woods. I had all the excitement I ever wanted in Korea, and these last few months in Tokyo haven't been exactly restful. Oh, we'll come back with so many ducks, we won't be able to carry them. Yeah, but if we don't even see a duck, it'll be all right with me. Just getting out there, away from everything. Hey, uh, did you hear the weather report tonight? That's the only thing I didn't like too well. Well, what'd they say? Something about the big storm. I think it'll be okay. After all, Friday is the day after tomorrow. Anyhow, it's not supposed to hit Honshu. They said it would most likely veer out to the sea as it came oh. out. Now, aren't you glad you bought that shotgun? Yeah, I sure am. Well, kid, I think I'll turn in. I got plenty of work to do tomorrow if I'm going to be gone for ten days. Yeah, me too. Oh, keep your fingers crossed that nothing will happen. Okay. <laughs> What a day. What a stinking, lousy day. Hey, watch out. Here, here give me your hand. <coughs> Holy cats, I've had it. And I thought I was wet before. You sure are now. Say, you sure you know where we are? Uh, if you put it that way, no. Well, it's an honest answer. That, that tree over there, I swear we passed it four times. Possibly. And we've been going for three hours now. We should have hit the lake an hour ago. You just did. Well, this is no lake. This is the swamp. The swamp's on the other side. We must have circled the lake completely. Could be. Oh, possibly. Could be. What a great guy to be lost in a typhoon with. Personally, I'll take Marilyn Monroe. Hey, hey, Steve. Look over there. It's a light. Where? Well, over there, you see. Well, for once, you're right. Well, come on. You know Japanese, now's your chance to try it out. Maybe you can find out where we are. Where we are? Who cares where we are? I'll tell them to throw another briquette on the hibachi. They're having overnight guests. Try it again. Maybe they didn't hear you. Okay, it's not polite, but here goes. Kumbanwa! Who is Watakushi? it? Who is it? Where the heck does he open the door and look? He speaks English anyway. I'll try him on that. We're Americans and we're lost. What are you doing out here? We're army sergeants, sir. We're on leave on a hunting trip. Maybe he'd like our whole life stories while we're freezing to death out here. Well, he can afford to be choosy. Good evening, gentlemen. Won't you come in? Yes, sir. Can I do for you? Well, I'm afraid we're pretty wet, sir. We're going to drip water all over the floor here. Do not give it a thought. My name is Jorgens, Henry Jorgens. I'm Sergeant Stevens, sir, and this is Sergeant Johnson. Delighted. 
Wait, I will call my man and he will bring you something to put on and take your wet things to dry. That's very nice of yeah, you. We don't want to put you to any trouble. Oh, no trouble at all. We just came here hoping to get directions back to Sugiyoshi. Did you ring, sir? Bring kimonos for these two gentlemen, Peters, and a pot of hot coffee and a tray of sandwiches. Very good, sir. <laughs> Yes, gentlemen, it is a bit unusual to find an open fireplace in a Japanese house, but then I designed this place myself. Oh, really? It makes a very comfortable hunting lodge. That is when I can get away from my interests in Tokyo. Then there is pretty good hunting up here. Oh, excellent. Duck, quail, deer. A huntsman's paradise, you might say. Yeah, but no electricity, no telephone. I should think you'd feel pretty isolated all by yourself. I like the isolation. Yes, it's very convenient. I can leave my office, and there's nothing under the sun can call me back until I'm ready to return. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm not alone. There's always Peter. You say you've been up here a week. You had any luck? Luck? Oh, you mean the hunting? Well, hardly. The weather, you know. Will you excuse me, gentlemen? I must make sure that Peters has prepared your room. Oh, surely, sir. That's funny. What's funny? We've been checking the weather in this area all week now, ever since we were sure we had our leave, and it's been good up here. It's been good the way you and I figure it, but maybe he's allergic to those light drizzles they had last week. Yeah, but there's another thing. When we went by the dining room coming in here, that guy Peters was unsetting the table. Yeah, so? It was set for three. Even if he's in the habit of sitting down to dinner with Peters, which I'll guarantee he isn't, who was the other guy? Ah, you're imagining things. No, no, I'm not. Besides, I don't like the looks of that guy Peters. He could give cards and spades to Boris Karloff. Come off it. You want to go out and flounder around all night in that mess outside? Mm, no, I guess not. Anyway, we don't have anything he'd want. So what are you worrying about? Hey, that's a portable radio. It's just about 12 o'clock. Maybe we can get the midnight news on Armed Forces Radio. Why, what do you want the news for? I want to hear this guy excusing himself for that weather Trial forecast this plane. morning. Uh-huh. Of Special Presidential Envoy J. Hansen Forsyth. Mr. Forsyth will arrive at 700 hours tomorrow morning via Stratocruiser and will be met by high ranking American and Japanese officials. It is expected that the subject of their talks will encompass long term economic aid in addition to other matters. The typhoon was in the news tonight, although earlier forecasts placed her center at 500 miles southeast of the Tokyo vicinity, she unexpectedly changed course. Latest reports indicate that the eye of the storm will come within 100 miles of the highly populated central Honshu district. Reports of damage and possible casualties have been hampered by communication failures in various parts of the country, although damage is expected generally to be heavy with some loss of life. Rescue work has been slowed as well, although teams of Army and Air Force doctors have been made available to the local disaster units at Fukuoka, where the storm hit this morning. Tokyo Weather Central says the heavy winds and rain will abate during the night. Tomorrow will be fair and slightly colder. And that's the news to this hour. This is your commentator, Corporal Ken Harding, reporting for the Far Eastern Network. Well, gentlemen, your room is ready. And I'm ready, too. I hope you'll excuse us, sir, but we've been hiking just about all day, and we're really bushed. I understand perfectly. Now, if you'll just follow me. Oh, yeah, thanks. Here we are. I hope you'll be most comfortable. Peters has dried your clothes. The bell is just over there. If there's anything you need, Peters will be happy to provide it. This is very nice of you, sir. We surely do appreciate it. Not at all, not at all. Glad to help. Good night, Sergeant. Good night, sir. I'll bet. Peters will be glad to provide it. He's never been glad in his life. Are you back on that kick again? I don't like this whole setup. Can it, will you? And let's start enjoying these beds. They look pretty good to me. Pretty good. Okay. Okay.
Steve. Steve, wake up. What, what the heck? Be quiet now. Listen. What time is it? 2.30. Listen. I told you there was something funny going on around here. You wouldn't pay any attention to me? What about it? Well, I got up after you went to sleep, and I've been looking around outside. That guy Peters is patrolling around the outside of this house like he's guarding it or something. Uh, he's got a big black Doberman on a leash. Well, maybe they went to canine school together, and they like to keep in practice. Oh, listen, will you? I managed to avoid him and Rover, all right. And there's a barn out back that's all locked up. But I looked in the window and... Steve, there's someone in there, tied up to a chair with a gag in his mouth. Huh? It's a Japanese guy. Holy cats. Come on, come on, get dressed. I think I can loosen the lock on the window with my knife. I'd like to find out what's going on here. And I need you to keep watch for Boris Karloff. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production, The Vital Minute. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Have you ever been a sidewalk superintendent, stood on the sidelines and watched a big building going up? The whole darn thing is so fascinating that you lose all track of time. You're completely absorbed watching the architect's blueprints come to life before your eyes. And it's the same way when you enlist in the United States Army. You see, you can't join unless you're good material to begin with. And then they mold you into a man. A man who doesn't have to look up to anybody because he's the best soldier in the world. They give you rugged basic training so that you can defend yourself even when the odds seem all against you. They send you to good schools, train you to be a specialist in a technical field. They give you good-looking uniforms, the best medical care, everything you need to be an outstanding member of an outstanding service, the United States Army. Your local recruiting sergeant will be glad to give you full information. See him today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of The Vital Minute. He's gone around the house with the dog. We're okay now for a minute. Okay, over this way, Steve. Right. Here we are. <laughs> One more knot and we're finished. There. Oh. oh, thank heaven you come. You are American Secret Service, yes? No. Definitely not. We're just two soldiers on a hunting trip. Uh, quick, uh, no time to lose. I will explain. I am Matsuko Onaka of the Foreign Office. Uh, you know about the arrival of Mr. J. Hansen Forsyth of your country. Oh, is he the guy we heard about on the news tonight that's coming to talk to your government about a loan? Ah, so you, you know. Uh, that is good. He comes with a very important mission from your president. Mm. He come to discuss with us the possibility of giving further economic aid to my country to help us once again be self-supporting. There are foreign powers who desire that this should not happen. These powers are working with a small group of our own citizens. They will try to, uh, how you say, discredit present government. But how? How do you tie in with this? I am a humble member of government, but assigned the important role of meeting Mr. Forsyth this morning on arrival. Uh, and what about this Jorgens? Who is he? Where, where does he fit in? Uh, Jorgens, or whatever his name may be, is a member of this group. Uh, Maybe leader of same. He and others have kidnapped me last night and bring me here. They think I do not understand language in which they speak, but uh, I have a small linguistic talent. On trip from Tokyo, I learned that they will substitute imposter at airport in my place using credentials which they obtain from me. This man will be armed. There will be a attempt on life of Mr. Forsyth. Holy cats! We've got to stop them. Oh, this is imperative. Results of this attempt, even if not successful, would most certainly put my government in unfavorable light. Cause government to lose face in country here as well as abroad. If government should fall, new election will cause delay of negotiations. Uh -huh. Economic collapse, among other unfortunate uh, possibilities. There's just one chance I can see. 
As we came in tonight, I saw a car in the driveway. If we could get hold of that, we could take you to the nearest town. Oh, excellent, Sergeant. Uh, Tsugiyoshi would be a member of Japanese rural police. He can put me in touch with proper persons in Tokyo. And we can notify the Provo Marshal. Oh, be careful behind you. Speedos. Watch out. Oh, no. He's got a gun. I get the gun, Steve. And I got Mr. Peters. Yeah. His head was just the right size for this chair. What happened to Rover? I fear he must have encountered stray bullet. Mr. Onoko, are you all right? Uh, quite all right. Oh, uh, quick! It is Mr. Jorgens. He must have heard the shots. We must stop him. What about this guy? Oh, he'll be on ice for about an hour. And by that time, we should be able to send someone back for him. Oh, he got away. Yeah. What do we do now? Uh, if this storm keeps up, maybe that plane won't come in at all and all our problems will solve themselves. We cannot afford to take chances. Besides, the radio said it would let up. Looks like we got to get to Sugiyoshi. Agreed. How far is it from here? Uh, two miles, perhaps. Well, we're not going to get any wetter walking than we are right now, so let's get going. That's for sure. Let's go. Boy, we must be a picture. Did you ever see such a black night? And such a wet one. I, I wouldn't mind just mud. There must be about six inches of water floating on top of this roadbed. Yeah, if I hit another one of those rocks and go down again... Oh! I shouldn't have talked about here, it. Here, here, I'll give you a hand. Uh, come on. Yeah. Oh, light ahead. Hmm? Oh, it's a red one, too. Must be the police box. Hey, let's go. Remember in our orientation course when they told us about these police boxes? Yeah. They said if you were lost or wanted to know where the nearest train station was or where to buy a kimono or a cup of tea, just look for the red line. Well, I bet you never thought you'd be mixed up in anything like this, did you? Well, all I hope is they're as good as the lieutenant said they were. Well, here we are. We'll soon know. What's he saying? He's explaining. How's he doing? He's still explaining. Getting any place yet? Look, there's one thing about Japanese. You can't be in a hurry. If you can say it in two words, you use ten. <laughs> oh, so, so. Now what? The line is down to Tokyo. He can't even reach the next town five miles away. It's a larger town, he says, and has a direct connection to the Tokyo Central Police. Holy cats, what a lousy break. Uh, Mr. Onoko, we'll have to get a car. Can he dig one up for us? I have the uh, same idea. Uh, we'll ask. Good, yes. good. Uh -huh. What? A very small town, he says. Only vehicle owned by farmer nearby. Uh, this is a three-wheel truck which he used to take a produce to market. Uh -huh. A policeman not permitted to leave station without permission of sergeant in charge. Uh, one of you could uh, drive vehicle. Oh, we'll sure try. Sergeant Stevens has been to driver's school. He's checked out on anything with wheels. Well, let's have a look at oh, yeah. it. Uh, if he's worried about leaving to go get the truck, tell him we'll watch the post while he's gone. Yes. Will he do it? It isn't according to the book, but he says okay. <laughs> Take it easy, will you? It doesn't ride as good back here as up front. Yeah, we're almost there. You'll be all right. Oh, so sorry for discomfort. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> we have now reached town of Fugamo. The slope is police box just ahead. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I think now I should try to go and use the telephone. Yeah, well, we'll stay here and watch the truck. Very good. We'll return, uh, how you say, uh, Moscow. Right. <laughs> Uh, cannot race uh, Tokyo Station. Uh -huh. I fear line from here also suffers storm damage. Well, how far to the next town? Four miles. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Well, that was the fifth stop. No soap. 
What do you think, Bill? I say we go straight through. We're wasting so much time on these stops to try to telephone. We'll be too late to save Forsyth. I'll buy that. We better make a plan, though, for when we get there. I guess it'll all depend on how much time we have left. If we can explain the situation to the police, I don't like the idea of going off on our own. We may have to, just the same. The airport is about 15 miles. I saw a sign back there a minute ago. Oh, we're going to shave it mighty thin. He's coming in downfield. That'll give us time. He's got a taxi back to the terminal. Oh, regards, reception committee. Even now, coming out of building. Oh. Men we look for carrying small box. <laughs> Observe. It will be revolver. Plan is that in confusion after attack, assassin will disappear into crowd and make escape good to colleagues with high-powered sedan nearby. There comes the plane. Let's make a run for it. Okay, let's go. What about those MPs on the barrier? We'll explain to them later. I don't like it, but I guess it'll have to do. The plane is stopping. Here come the men with the box. Bill, take the fence and don't stop no matter what. You've got to get to that guy. All right. Get going. about the last I remember, my skull was just slightly dented by a nightstick, and even though the owner of it apologized afterwards, I don't think we'll ever be real pals. I wound up in Tokyo General Hospital, and I remember when I came to, the first thing I thought about was whether I was going to get busted, and there was that beautiful nurse telling me my CO had given me a commendation for saving the life of this guy, Forsyth. One thing, though, on my next leave, I don't think I'll go hunting. <laughs> Here's a special tip to you young men who graduated from high school this year. Something to think about. When you're making plans for your future, look into the future our United States Army can offer you. Do you want real technical training? For instance, our modern United States Army runs the greatest technical schools in the world because the modern Army needs hundreds of kinds of technical skills. Radio, radar, maintenance of engines and delicate optical equipment, and many others. Never. And you can get this kind of training in one of these great Army schools, and here's the way to do it. Go down to your nearest United States Army recruiting station with that high school diploma and apply for the course of your choice. Then, if your application is approved, you enlist and start basic training that all good soldiers must have. Then, you take your course, and you're set for some of the world's best schooling. Find out about it today at your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Believe me, you'll be glad you did. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army, and this is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>